Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So in this tutorial, this is what we will be creating. We'll just be setting up some simple flipbook animations for a 2D character and have it different, use different ones and see how we can change between them. Uh, this will just be a very basic setup for this and we'll be doing more advanced ones in episodes to follow. But uh, along with animations, we'll also set up some backgrounds so you can have some of that running around along with some parallaxing effects and also setting up collisions for tiles and tile maps and such. Um, so yeah, that is what we will be doing in this first basic episode. So starting off, we now have a blank project here. We are in Unreal Engine version 5.02. And let's just get started with getting some of our assets in. So in this tutorial, we will be using some of the assets made by this user called Clembod. These are really nice sprites for a warrior character. So I will be providing links to download this below. And essentially what you can do is you click on the download button and you can either choose to give some money to the creator for it, or you can just go and download it for free if that's what you prefer. It's up to you. With the assets downloaded, we can go into our either, you can go to sprite sheet and get a complete sheet over the animations or images, or you can go to individual sprite. We will be using individual sprite in this case. Starting off, we'll go into our idle folder and create some idle animations. So we'll just copy all of these and drag them into our folder in Unreal Engine. So this will be our idle animation and it's pretty straightforward to create 2D animations out of this. Uh, these are all textures and if we control an S, so we save them and we can actually, let's create some folder structure here so we have something. So we will create a folder called idle and we'll move everything in there. So inside of here, if we choose to mark all of the different images, we can go to Sprite Actions and we can create Sprite. This creates a Unreal Engine asset that Unreal Engine can make use of with these uh, images here. And the next step is also pretty straightforward. We can mark a bunch of different assets and then right click and choose to create a flipbook to create a sort of animation based on those. So we can call this FB underscore idle. And opening that up, we can see that this asset now consists of a few different uh, images to create this animation. Now you can see here immediately that it looks sort of blurry. This has to do with, uh, there are some settings here on, if we do this, uh, some settings on these images that we imported that can be optimized for uh, this type of development. So just right clicking on them, clicking Sprite Actions and apply Paper 2D uh, textures. Uh, settings for textures and then going into our idle you can see that it is much sharper now and better for our purposes now that we have our first animation in place let's go to our content folder again and let's create a character so we'll go to blueprints and we'll type in paper and character and you can see that we get a paper character as an option which we will inherit from so we'll select that, call it bp underscore character. And this is uh, the base class. Uh, it's making use of base class for 2D animation. And it's uh, very similar to a normal character uh, in Unreal Engine. You, you have the capsule which you use to interact with in the world and you have a character movement. The difference in this case is that we're instead having a sprite instead of a mesh. Since we have created one animation, we can go to the source flipbook, flipbook here on Sprite and choose our idle animation. You can see what it will look like in game. And to demonstrate what that will look like here, we can just drag it out into the world and you'll see that this is what it's like. And just like a normal character, it will use the capsule component for its collision. So we need to make sure that our capsule component actually encompasses our character properly. So choosing it, we can change the capsule radius to make it thinner so it encompasses our character. We can see that our character is slightly offset. We'll move it a little bit. And the snapping is too large. Let's try five, something like that. It seems to be the proper width now. So let's reduce the height a bit, something so that the capsule is approximately where the feet are. And then we can see in the world what it looks like. So our character here, if we mark it and press M key, it will go down to the ground. 
we can see that it's pretty snug to the floor. It's a little bit below with the feet we can see, so we can adjust this a little bit by having the sprite, uh, either the capsule larger or the sprite uh, raised a little bit. We'll choose to make the capsule a little bit larger like so. So that's what it looks like. From here, let's create some inputs for our character. We'll go to project settings, we'll go to inputs, and we'll make sure to have an axis mapping for moving right and left. So we can say move right, just like we would in a third person character. And we can say keyboard and D key for moving right. And we can create another one. And we choose keyboard and A for moving left. So minus one on the scale on this one. And then in addition to that, since we're already here, we can create another one for jump as well. Like so, and we'll choose to have the keyboard space bar for that one. So now we have our input set up, so we'll go back to our character. Now we need to make sure to map these inputs to our character itself. So let's go into our character. We go and create our events. So move right, the axis event for that. While we're here, we'll make the jump event as well. So we want the action event for that. So now that we have that created, we want to make sure that our character is moving. And we do this by calling on the existing functionality that we get from this class. Dragging up from our event, we can type in add movement input. And this will give our pawn input and the axis value from our move right event will be what we use as scale. Uh, when it comes to the world direction, we will be picking one along the axis of what we want to move. So in this case, we want to have it along the two uh, directions of the red axis, which is the X axis. So we'll put a one value here and that will essentially be multiplying whatever value we get from the scale value to determine where we're going. Now that we have movement, let's test it out. So we click play. And we can see that we're moving something else than the actor itself. So we'll select the pawn and we'll type in possess to make sure that we are using controller or player zero to auto possess this character. And we try again. And now we can see that we are moving with left and right. However, we have a camera that is inside of it. So we go to our BP character again and we add a character camera. Uh, so we add a spring arm, just so we have something to attach our camera to. and this red uh, line here will be denoting the length arm. Adding a camera to this, like so. We now have a camera. However, we want to see it from the side here. So if we rotate this, and we want to rotate around the blue axis, so it's uh, moving in that direction. 90 is wrong. This is also not a spring arm. That is a spring arm. So that's the wrong direction. Let's try minus 90 instead. So okay. So now we're getting it from this angle, which looks good. Let's go back and try again. Okay, so now we have our character that we can move around with, but we don't have any other, other animations for it currently. Also, we have this sphere here that we're going to be dealing with as well to take care of. So let's start off with the sphere. The sphere is just the default pawn that we have set up in our project settings. So if we go to maps and modes, we can see here under game mode, we have uh, default pawn class, default pawn. So if we create another game mode, so we go to blueprint class and type in game mode and choose game mode and call this bp underscore game mode, save. Then we can go in this level and override the game mode, with BP game mode, it will make use of our settings. So in this case, let's go into the game mode and make sure that we have a different pawn class here as default. So we'll choose our BP character, compile and save. And now if we play, the, the sphere is gone. Okay. Next up, let's fix some movement. So we'll create another folder, call this running, something like that. We'll save our map, we'll save it as new map, sure that'll be fine. Now we go get the run sprites that's available in the folders and drag it into Unreal Engine in our new running folder. With these imported, let's make sure to save them and then change their settings. Then 
create sprites from them and then choose the sprites to create a flipbook asset. And once we have everything there, we can just save everything here. So now we have another asset here for our animations that we can make use of. So let's go to our character and our event graph. And on our move axis right here, we'll add some logic. Since we don't have the ability to use an animation graph like we do with a normal character, we have to do some other things ourselves. And we can put this either on tick or we can use our input movement, right? Which essentially will be working as a tick for now. We'll be making some more advanced, better systems in later tutorials. But this, just to make sure that it's easily shown off, we're going to be doing it this way for now. So what we're doing here is we're essentially checking against the axis value here. We want to check if it's equal to zero. Since it's a float, we want to do nearly equal to zero because floats are stored a little bit differently, which means that it's difficult to make an exact match against zero. It usually doesn't end well. So we'll choose to uh, compare against zero and make sure that our tolerance is something that we want to have. So maybe 0 0.1 is pretty uh, generous, I think. Create a branch after that, and we hook that up from after our input, and we'll make sure to compare against this. So if it is true, we're going to stand still, and what we're going to be doing then is we're essentially going to be setting our flipbook to be um, the idle. So we set flipbook, and we copy paste this, and we set the first one to be idle, and the second one to be running, and we hook up the sprite there as well. So now when we play, we should be getting... Did I not do that right? It looked right, okay. And now you can see that we have our animation running. However, it's only running to the right, it's not running to the left. So we'll fix that next. The very first thing we want to do is to go to our character. And we want to go to our character movement. And we want to scroll down to the part where it says... Uh, what is it called again? It's called planar movement. So what we want to do here is we want to constrain it to a plane, like so, which unlocks these options. And what this does is we can choose to have a plane constraint normal. So this means that we want to set a one value to whatever plane we don't want to move along. So if we want to move along X, which is red, and blue, which is uh, Z, then we want to have Y as one. So that's what we're setting Y to. We can then also have a planar constraint, constraint origin to make sure that our character moves to that position uh, at the start. So we'll do it like so, and we'll, it will go to 0, 0, 0. To demonstrate this, we can take a, let's take a, let's take a shape, like a cube, I guess, something like that. We'll make sure that it is at the origin, and then we'll scale it a bunch like so, let's say. <clears throat> Now, if we were to play our character, we will get teleported inside of the wall, which will look weird or it looks like something is wrong there. That's essentially because our character uh, here is trying to move into the area here. If we place it above this area, it will move to that area and then land on top of it instead. And we can move freely on top of it here now. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you get a problem with this uh, in regards. The reason why the camera looked like it did was because uh, if we move this character down again and click play, we can see that we're sort of in where immediately where the character is essentially, like we did before when it didn't have a camera. So this is because our character currently has a spring arm uh, setting its, I believe it's the spring arm, it has something like uh, collision testing. If we unclick that, it should be looking better in that regard but we still have our wall here, which is essentially where our character is inside. So that part still happens. So you need to make sure that if you want to use geometry like this to make sure that it, uh, if you have the start constraint like I do currently, uh, to work around it like this. But you don't have to have the start constraint if you don't want to. This is merely to make sure that you're going to be starting at the place where you expect to based on what your level is uh, created and such. To actually get our character to run in the proper direction, we now need to type in orient, I believe it is, orient rotation to movement. So we make sure that it's going to be looking in whatever direction it is moving in. Uh, and doing this will in part solve our problem. If we start now, you can see that 
it's while we're running right it's looking fine while we're running left it seems like something is chopping and this is because it's getting a conflicting command now with some other settings that we have so if we go back to our character and we go to the character itself and we type in um control i believe yeah so use controller rotation jaw i'm checking this and saving we will now have our character running to the right and then running to the left but it will have the camera still rotating around uh, like so uh, it will always make sure that it has the character looking like it's running to the right with the camera that we currently have like this and that might be what you're after it might not uh, depending on what you're after we will deal it with it like this going to our character we can go to our spring arm and on our spring arm we can go to our rotation and say it should have world instead of relative that will make sure that the rotation is starting off like this and staying like this in uh, relation to whatever rotation that the character has so it doesn't really matter how the cr character is uh, rotating so now when we're running back and forth you can see that it's working fine with the camera however you can see this sort of flipping with our um, sprite character and that might be something that you're after aesthetically uh, or it might not be we'll fix it by doing the following going to our character we go to our character movement and then scrolling down to the section which is character movement rotation so this is a consequence of us choosing to have a orient rotation by movement so that essentially means that the rotation rate here will come into play and if you want to have you can change this value to something that has a rotation rate that you want to or if you want it to be instantaneous you can just put a really large number here and it will rotate pretty quickly so now you can see it's immediate when it's uh, changing directions so let's say we want to add a jump to this as well now so we find the jump folder here we have our jump images so we'll just drag them into our project and we'll make sure to actually let's create a folder for this as well and move them in there make sure that they have the proper texture settings we make sure that we create sprites out of them and then we take the sprites to create the flipbook and now we have our flipbook jump. and it's just a three image animation like so Adding this to our character is fairly straightforward. We're gonna be keeping it pretty simple. Uh, so just before we check this, we're just gonna be checking another if here before. And we're gonna check falling. So if we're falling, we're gonna be doing our jump. If we're not falling, we're doing the normal code. So we'll just copy this to show it off. And adding our jump here so since this is going every tick it's going to be checking are we falling yes we're falling then this is the highest priority for now uh, and then if we're not falling it's going to check between idle and running and we want to make sure that it is actually jumping when we press jump so uh, from jump here we can drag out and just type out jump there's a jump function for this and when we release we want to give the command stop jump which also exists within the same component uh, or class sorry it's like so and this will also give us all the events for uh, the jump having been succeeded and such so now we can run back and forth and pressing space with jump and, and jump in sideways as well so yeah that's how easy it is to set up some basic uh, sprite animations essentially so let's go look at creating some more things so let's say we want to add a background we'll just find some background from the other pack and we'll drag it into our project we will create a sprite out of it and now we're all ready to bring it out into the world here so we can bring it out place it where we want to place it scale it if we want to scale it and now we essentially have an environment for our character to have as a backdrop so that's how easy it is to get images back in here and you can see this is probably a bit too upscaled or either too close depending on how you want to perceive it like so and then in addition to this maybe we want to add some tile sets and that is easy as well 
So tileset is essentially just a picture with a lot of different components you can use to build something together. Uh, we bring both of these into our project here, like so. And then once we have them in here, we can right click on one and say we want to have a sprite action and create a tile set. <clears throat> this creates a new asset for us that allows us to go in here and do some things like uh, collision. So we can go in and choose, you can see that the square here is a little bit big. If we wanted to have this little marker down or this little piece of geometry here, we couldn't because it's too big. You can see that it's four times too big, which means that if we have this, we're going to be getting the right dimensions. Now we can get this specific one. Uh, and it might be what you're after when it comes to this. It might be something else. You might want to have larger, bigger, depending on what your different images is. But for this, 16 by 16 seems okay. And on this set, you can also add a geometry like a collision. Uh, like I said, you can add either, you can click on the colliding tiles and you'll see everything that has been set up for collision. So currently we have nothing. And if we, we can keep it on actually. If we were to click on add box here, you can see we get a generated box automatically. And you can see that it appears now as it has collision. And we can move this around to place so it matches our geometry. Uh, we can also delete it if we want to and add specific polygons. And we can actually draw these however we want. We can have multiples of them if, if we wanted to as well can really make something crazy if you wanted to. So now I have essentially created a geometry that looks this like this in, in this map, just to show you that it works. Um, let's take this other one, create a normal box for that one, and save it. Uh, so from our tile set, we now can create something called a tile map, which is essentially just a, call it a tile map uh, test. Uh, it's a, a collection of different uh, tile pieces that you have put together, and you can uh, set the settings for them over here. So you can have 10 by 10, for example, to create a tile set. And if we were to create the one that looks like normal collision, we can put some of them in here. Then we can take some of the ones with the crazy collision and we can save them. And then we have a tile map created, which we can then bring out into the world. So bringing this out is just essentially like a picture, but it has the collision on it as well. So this is what it looks like. And now currently it's over there. We want to make sure that it's on our zero axis. So it's in line with our character. So our Y here should be zero at least. And now if you go from lit to player collision, you can actually see the, the specific collisions that are created here and that they're different from the normal box ones over there. Uh, if that is of interest. And now we can interact with this if we wanted to. So. Our character currently has a mode to be able to step up on a certain height and apparently this height is within what it can uh, step over with certain speeds. Sometimes it seems at least. So yeah, so you can jump up and, and interact with these. You might want to change some of the settings on the character movement because mine is currently running very fast. You might want to change some. You have a bunch of different options you can change there from uh, the speed Let's see, max, max speed perhaps, speed. So we see apparently the speed is in centimeters per second and you have a max speed crouch as well. So you can toggle these around to have something more to your liking, maybe 400. So we're losing one third of speed. That looks much better. So yeah, uh, so tweak with those as you see fit. So if we want to create something larger than just a tile, like for example a tree, like in this set over here, we can create a new tile set and make sure to save it. And then we create, actually we can go in here and make sure that we have the proper size. So if we have a size that's 32 by 32 and that's too big and we want to have 16 by 16 like the other one, that's perfectly fine. That gives us more granularity when it comes to like uh, the different sections that we want to have. And if we create a, tile map now based on this tile set. We can open up and it will have the same tile width and height as the set has when we create it. So uh, we can now mark, for example, this large tree, if that's what we wanted to bring out from here. You can see that this is all the tiles that it will be needing. And bringing it out here, you can see how many tiles it will take to take up. So our size for our tile map here is currently too large, too small. So we'll increase it a little bit. And we can now click in our little tree here, so we have a tree. And then saving that, we can just bring that into the world as any other of these sprites, essentially.
and bring it out and have it maybe as a foreground element like so. And you can duplicate this with holding down Alt just like normal. So now, maybe not the best height for this, but now you have something that you can essentially run behind and get a sense of depth in that regard as well. And you can of course have multiple layers in the, for your background as well to sell a parallax effect. Your parallax effect will uh, of course come from uh, just having it, having the different backgrounds in uh, different ranges from each other. So if we had one really far in the background here and we made it 4x4 four four and maybe lowered this first one a little bit so we can see over it. So you can see that we get this parallax effect of something larger in the background that's moving slower compared to what's closer to us. Um, so yeah. Some final notes then. If we play and we run with our character, you might be, or actually when it's standing still, it's maybe most apparent. It is sort of getting a little bit blurry. What I've found is that this is a setting uh, on our project settings. And if you type in anti-aliasing or just anti, uh, you get anti-aliasing method here. And what I found is that any of these settings work fine, except for the temporal one. Every of the other one is just sufficient. Actually, I haven't tried the super resolution one, but multi sample and fast approximate should all look much better in my opinion. But you might want to change these around uh, to see that you get a result that matches what, what you're looking for. It might be your, your experience might vary a little bit. But yeah, now it's looking better on my computer at least. Uh, in addition to this, I would also highly recommend that you save often when you work with sprites like this because you do a lot of referencing when you have uh, your, your, your textures, essentially your images that you're creating sprites of, which you're, you're then creating tiles of. If you have any of these unsaved and your Unreal crashes, for example, you might lose some of the assets completely, which then might break some of uh, the connections between the different assets that you created subsequently. Uh, so I would recommend you save often to avoid that kind of issue. As a very final note, uh, if you feel that your animations are moving too fast or too slow, you can go into your character and on the sprite you have a setting for play rate. This will affect all of your different animation flipbooks. Uh, so changing it to higher and lower will make all of them slower or faster if you want to be uniform. If you want to have some more detailed control, you can go to a specific flipbook. Then you have keyframes here and you can see it create one index for each of the different uh, images and you can set how many frames it's supposed to run for. And that takes into consideration how many frames per second you have as animation as well. So these two settings in conjunction can give you a very granular check of uh, your animation speed. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. I hope that you found this useful. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.